Time to do a little work on my truck. Not my favorite. <laughs> that was dumb. That, that was dumb. Every tool's a hammer. Unless it's a screwdriver, then it's a chisel. <laughs> we need a torch. Hate that nut. We're not doing that. Because <laughs> it ain't built till it's overbuilt. Don't force it. Get a bigger hammer. Every day is a school day. Although I do love my old square body and the wreath makes it hard not to love. I don't love working on it. I just would rather do other things, but you know, sometimes you just gotta get things done. Uh, uh, listen playing the song of my people. Uh, I've had a few people that have asked some questions you know, about my truck. They see my truck in the background of all my videos and stuff. Uh, and they wanted to see a little more, know a little more about it. So I'm gonna put it in the shop, get the heat going, and I'll, I'll show you around. And I'll show you what I'm, what I'm up to today. I didn't, I didn't build this truck. I bought this truck from a uh, fairly young kid and he he built it well he didn't really build it he he wasn't a, a real handy guy he sent it to shops and had it built he had he had a shop do an ls swap um it had a six inch lift kit in it when i bought it which i didn't care for and i took out it had a lot of stuff like you're gonna you're gonna see a few things i'm gonna change here because they're just not the way i would have built it you know so uh Got some things I don't care for, but overall, you know, when you buy out somebody else's project that they started, you usually get a lot more for your money than if you build it. Now, I'm a guy that loves to build stuff, but a lot of times you, you can buy somebody's project that they're either sick of or don't have the money to finish or whatever, and they've sat on it for a while, and unfortunately for them, they end up selling it for less than the sum of the parts they have into it. And that's the case with this truck. I bought this truck for less than I would have into building a truck like this. And now I can just change the few things that I don't like and make it just the way I want it. That's kind of what I'm doing here. I've been driving it two years. I think when I finish this little wave of projects right here that I'm doing, that'll be the, that'll be all the changes that I really want to make to it. It'll, it'll be, should be exactly what I want for a truck. That's the plan anyway, okay? Don't hold me to it. So yeah, I mean, here's my truck. It's a Silverado and it has everything. I mean, it has the fancy little trim rings around all the blinkers and tail lights and all that stuff. Two-tone, obviously, with the chrome on the back of the cab. And then, uh, you know, inside it has all the Silverado stuff, the fancy door trim, the headline cloth headliner and all the trim around the windows and all that stuff a pillar trim when i was a kid everybody had a square body truck they were just trucks and you could pick up a a square body three-quarter ton four-wheel drive stripped down work truck for I, I don't even know but i'm guessing four or five thousand dollars probably um so that's what everybody had is either Ford or Chevy and some Dodges and they were mostly stripped down work trucks. You very seldom got to see a Silverado or a high option Cheyenne or whatever the GMCs were, high Sierras or something. Um, but this truck is, appears to be the real deal. Power locks, power windows, air conditioning, all of which works in this. When I started driving an older truck, you know, there's... You, it's not a new truck. You lose a lot of stuff. So I found an aftermarket cup holder that goes in the ashtray, which I didn't, I don't need an ashtray. So that works good for me. I bought this thing, which holds all of my paperwork that I need to carry, and I can easily grab it and pull it out if I want to. So that's good. I, uh, storage is probably the biggest thing that I missed when I got rid of my 2015. Um, I bought this thing, goes behind the seat, holds just a ton of crap. I bought a sweet gun rack. <laughs> Carry my, actually, I had that in stock from back when gun racks were cool. And, you know, holds my umbrella, so that's nice. In New York State, that's all you can carry in your gun rack. <laughs> Don't get me started. Anyways, this truck drives 
good. I drove, I towed my camper. Uh, my camper's too big for this truck. But me and my friend Doc, we, we towed the camper to Ohio, to the to Bowling Green, to the tractor pull, two summers ago. Last summer, we towed our camper a couple different trips. Um, when we went to Ohio, it had a, a really loose torque converter. Trying to tow with that loose converter was pretty much a nightmare. I put a huge transmission cooler in it. It's the size of the radiator. It's a great big one. And that helped some, but I, I just couldn't tame that. So uh, la a year ago now, a year ago wintertime, uh, the transmission went and it reverse went. So while they had the transmission out, I got a, a tighter torque converter from a friend of mine, put that in and it drives so much nicer now. So I'm really, really liking that. When I got this truck, I had a 2015 Chevy that I bought brand new. Uh, I put almost 100,000 on it and the transmission started getting squirrely, which they do, those six speeds, uh, at about 100,000 they go. It kind of spooked me. And that was at the time when the COVID induced meltdown of, of used car prices was going on. And I, I took the truck to my local dealer and they bought it back from me for a stupid amount of money. And I went and bought this truck and I really don't miss my new truck. I mean, they have tons of cool stuff. There's no question you miss some of those nice things, you know, but uh, a couple little things you add and, and no, it's definitely not a new truck, but I don't hate it. If you're thinking about it, you know, going back, like a lot of people, I guess, I guess it's a thing. A lot of people do it now. They, they go back to an older truck. Well, I did, you know, uh, I would recommend it, it but, but just go into it knowing that an old truck is not a new truck. It's, it's, you know, it doesn't have the manners. It doesn't drive as nice. Um, this one doesn't have cruise control yet, although it does have the, the switch on the column. I think I have all the stuff to make it work. But anyways, uh, that's my truck. Uh, when I got it, it was not, it had just some little blisters of rust showing. And I do feel bad driving it in the winter a little bit, not a whole lot. I have it oiled, oil undercoated. I take it through the car wash weekly to get the salt sprayed off the bottom of it. Um, but it is, it is rusting, no doubt. But when I got it, this was just started. This box side is getting kind of punky. This fender's pretty bad. It needs both rockers and one cab corner, which I have those. They came with it, the kid had bought them, hadn't put them on. Neither have I, you know, but um, maybe someday I will. I hate body work, uh, but I can do it. If you watch the channel regularly, you'll remember I did a video about this cap. I fixed the cap up. My buddy Dave gave it to me um, and I put it on here. I kind of love it. Uh, I, and I know it definitely gives the truck an old man look, but you know what? I have some gray hair. I don't care. So I, I love how handy it is. Um, I do wish it were more waterproof because I do get um, water in. Hello, there we go. I do get some rainwater, you know, leaks in and stuff. I leave the windows open a crack, hoping it'll dry out. But, you know, I got, I got all my stuff in here and it stays mostly dry. I don't have, it certainly, there's no snow on it in the winter, you know, it's, it's kind of nice. I got a little, thing of tools back here and and uh i always carry some spare parts with me and uh it's it really is handy i do i, I really love the cap life i i uh i gotta admit it i didn't think i would but i do got the full silverado package back here chrome bumpers uh when i when I lowered it back down to stock right height, I got a friend of mine had some six lug rally wheels. I bought new center caps and trim rings for it. And it, I think it looks nice the way it is. Not much else to see over here. Oh, I recovered, recovered the seat uh, when I got it. It was terrible shape and you couldn't get vinyl. I, I wanted a vinyl seat. I prefer a vinyl seat uh, because I'm a guy that's usually got dirty pants. So. Uh, but you couldn't find a color that I wanted in vinyl, so I did this. And while I was at it, I put in heated seats. I never bothered to mount the switch, but they work fine. Um, 
So both sides have high and low heated seats. So that's the gist of, uh, you know, the rest of the truck. What I'm doing today is I'm going to take this uh, Holly intake off and put on the stock uh, plastic intake because there's so much, these intakes heat soak so bad being made out of aluminum sheet metal that in the summertime, this thing, the other thing I'm, I'm, I'm going to do, not today, but soon, is get rid of these headers. I've got a set of the nice Holly cast iron exhaust manifolds. Uh, in the summer, between the headers and that, the under hood of this thing gets so heat soaked that I have, I have fuel issues. When I'm towing the camper, it'll get down on horsepower because the temperature under the hood is, is unbelievable hot. Uh, and it's breathing super hot air and, it's in the, and it'll actually vapor lock the fuel system because it returns this super hot fuel back to the tank and eventually it heats the whole thing up. And anyway, one step at a time. Today, I'm gonna get this intake out of here. I've never worked on an LS. I'm an old guy. I worked on small block Chevys, big block Chevys. I've always been a Chevy guy, but these are a whole different animal. So I don't really know what I'm getting into. It looks and sounds like, talking to other guys, it seems like it's incredibly simple. So we're just gonna go with that hoping that that's true and we're gonna get this intake off here and i bought a stock uh the bread box intake they call it the the pickup truck intake or the trailblazer intake or whatever hopefully i bought the right one bought it off a super shifty guy in a parking lot of a store from facebook marketplace nothing could go wrong there i mean he needed the drug money bad so i'm sure everything he told me was true but uh i'm just gonna Go ahead and dive into something I don't have any idea what I'm doing on and see what I can break or ruin. See how it goes. Just It's just another day here. Just like that, it's done. I got the old one off, got the new one on. I got uh, one little surprise was the injector plugs aren't the same as the injectors that were on it before. So. I've got some adapter plugs ordered that are supposed to plug and play. Uh, I've been playing around here trying to get maybe my cruise control to work, but I didn't get very far. And it's time for supper. So we'll have to dive back into this project tomorrow, but uh, it's on there. It's mostly all hooked up. Just lacking a couple critical things. Well, things have escalated. I had just a little tiny oil leak, little drippy drip. And uh, one thing led to another. And I think it's either the rear main seal or the gasket on this cover. Either way, I have both. All I gotta do is pull off the whole exhaust and the shifter and transmission and transfer case and lower that down. And then you're ready to actually take apart the thing you wanna take apart. <laughs> Love, love repair work. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right. By the way, you gotta take the oil pan off to get the cover off the thing that holds the rear main seal. Gotta, well, you know, you, you can, you see what I mean. It's great. Okay, look at, I'm not gonna freak out. It's not a big deal. Look at the bright side. I have verification that it is a six liter because I hate going to the park store and they go is that a six liter and you go I think so it is okay and I got my cam specs if I should ever need them they're right in the end of the cam took a picture now I got them and I got a chance to look in my oil pan it's always a good idea once in a while no filings in there all clean but most importantly of this whole deal is look at this this rubber seal, this is where I suspected it was leaking, it was around this cover. And this, what's supposed to be a seal in here, the piece that broke out is rock hard and crusty. Crumbly. So there was no way that was sealing. I found the problem, almost certain. Maybe my truck will stop marking its territory so much. Huh. All right, one last thing. The cam position sensor comes down through here and 
I know that sometimes they leak, so when I had the intake off, I felt all around up here and there was no, no oil. So I thought, oh, it's not that. But then when I was, I was actually putting this cover back on with the new seals in it, and when I came to put it on, there was fresh oil running right down here, and I thought, huh. So I felt up here, and sure enough, right up in here, there was a bunch of wet oil. Now, it might have leaked up out of this gasket. I don't know for sure, but I did pull the cam position sensor out, and I rolled the O-ring out of the groove, and if you look real close, I don't know if it's going to focus. Come on now, work with me. Anyways, you can see a little flat around the outside of that O-ring where it's it's hardened up a bit and taken shape, although it's still pretty pliable. It rolled out of that groove without breaking. I got a feeling maybe that O-ring was leaking. So I don't know for sure if this was it, but I do know that this gasket was bad. You know, the seal in here was all bad. So I don't feel too bad about putting this on, but I am glad that uh, that oil had run down the back of the engine because I think it might've saved me putting this all back together and have it still leak possibly. <laughs> That'd be a frustration. Then I'd do exactly what you think I'm gonna do. I'd freak out, man. All right. New exhaust from the manifolds back to the mufflers. From here back is fine. Uh, got uh, a whole bunch of little, <laughs> little nitpicky things fixed. But anyways, transmission's back in. Everything should be ready to go. I re-ran the fuel system. It's all tucked in long ways from the exhaust. Goes up to the bell housing at the back of the motor. My supply and my return lines. It looks like we're ready to put oil in it and call it done. Up here top side, we've got the manifold swapped out obviously. Also exhaust manifolds. I really like those. You can see this one better over here. Uh, they're pretty slick. They seem like a nice quality casting and, and uh, I bought the the first pipe, you know, the one with the flange, I bought that as well. Um, so that matches up and it's made for this application. So that got me down to where they were both the same length and straight. So it was much easier to go from there. This is the fuel filter. I went with they call it the corvette filter i don't know if it was only used on vets but the deal with it is it's a filter and a pressure regulator um if you read online if some people say that they're no good but i think they must have been they must be in a higher horsepower application maybe where you need more flow because i mean they worked on corvettes so uh, they've got to be okay at least. Anyways, I'm gonna try it and see how it goes. Got new serpentine belt, oil change. It's good to go. I'm gonna top it off and get it the heck out of here. And like I said earlier, the mechanicals are, now I know for sure, it's a six liter LS. Transmission's a 4L80 overdrive four speed. And the transfer case is an NP205 cast iron case, a one ton case. I'm not sure why they did that when they built it. It had to be something to do with mating to that 4L80, which is typically a three-quarter or a one-ton transmission. So I'm guessing that's why they did it, but I didn't build it, so I can't really say for sure why. Because the front and the rear end are not one-ton. They're still half-ton pieces. So I don't think they did it because they were afraid they were going to tear up a half-ton. I think they did it something to do with mating to that 4L80. I had to, I had to take my Christmas wreath off. Makes me sad. Ooh, I'm so relieved. I was afraid those manifolds were gonna make it sound, I don't know, neutered. Ah, it still sounds good. Looks like she's a little rich. We gotta go to the tuner next. Well, there you have it. Some of you wanted to see a little tour of my truck, so you got to see kind of what it is and walk through some super fun maintenance slash repair work with me. I don't love that.
but we got it done. Time to go in, get some dinner. Thanks for spending your time with me. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate you. Make sure you've clicked subscribe. Very important. And make sure you tell your friends they should be watching The Town Tinker. It's incredibly entertaining. God bless you. God bless United States of America.